Why should these organizations change their structure from one of traditional silo functions to one of value-based teams? Here, in the example of a traditional organizational structure, we can see it includes supporting functions such as finance, marketing, sales and distribution, and a production-related function like R&D, and the two market segments, business clients and the individual customers. In the majority of this kind of traditional organizations, it's not uncommon that many people working in their silo functions don't even know clearly what their final products or services are or who their clients or end users are. For example, a product manager for business client segment has an idea of a new product, which needs to be evaluated and validated by R&D function. In order to do that, formal agreement of coordination involving resource utilization must be obtained from the managers of both functions which means going up and down the hierarchies of both silo functions to reach desired cooperation. Then people from finance department must also be involved to decide the financial feasibility of the effort. Probably some people from IT and human resource are also needed to obtain the necessary resources to move on. When the product idea evolves, it will certainly also involve people from marketing department for a marketing plan and a sales and distribution function to sell the product. This kind of interactions are repeated in various business activities. Every time when the communication is cross-functional, it requires passing along the hierarchies of the silo functions to put in place a formal agreement of coordination among people, which in the meantime generates tremendous amount of paperwork resulting in tons of documents and reports to demonstrate why, what and how and to obtain management approvals. The problems of silo functional organizations that involve the rigidity of hierarchy, forced coordinations among different silos, unnecessarily huge amount of paperwork can all be found on both macro and micro level of the organization, from business division down to individuals. In the traditional organization, we can find some more specialized and closely related functions in each silo, like in R&D department, there were analysts and developers of software and hardware, etc. It is noticeable that silo functions are structured based on skill set proximity, which is not at all adapted to the production and the delivery of value. While the purpose of an organization is to satisfy its customers by providing value-adding products and services, it is much more reasonable to structure the organization based on the value added by the products and services instead of skill set proximity. In order to understand how to realize the shift from silo functions to value-based teams, we need to look at the characteristics of each. In the traditional organization, we have learned that the silo functions are defined based on skill set proximity. If we want to shift to a value-oriented organization, we need to structure it based on what functions are required to produce value since multidisciplinary teams are needed to allow value delivery. With silo functions, when people talk about clients, it often refers to internal clients, which are not real clients of the company, but colleagues or partners in other functions or business divisions. Therefore, the deliverables for most silo functions are not valuable to real clients, but technical deliverables to their internal clients. While with value-based organizations, clients refer to the end users of the products and services, so they are real clients of the company and the deliverables are also real products and services or solutions that add real value to the client. The definitions of success are also different in the two structures. In silo functions, success for most people is simply do their work and make their department function normally. While in value-based teams, success is only defined as delighting the client with value-adding products and services. Consequently, what is more important in the silo functional structure is functional skill set. While in a value-based structure, good understanding of the real clients is as important as functional skills. Finally, the way of coordination also varies between the two structures. In silo functions, it involves a lot of formal documents, phases, and approvals. While in value-based teams, collaboration is continuous and multidirectional meaning cross-functional and the cross-value chain. To structure an organization based on value streams, the first thing to do is to identify the value drivers of the organization. 
What are value drivers? The values that distinguish a company's products and services in clients' point of view. There are different ways to define the value drivers. It can be the company's client segment, product category, geographic area, or sales channel, etc. In many cases, an organization is structured primarily based on its product category, since it better relates the company to its value. While sometimes geographic area is a more important value driver for some organizations. For example, a cosmetic products company. Their customers in Canada, Mexico, and China certainly have different product needs based on their different cultures and climates. So it makes sense to structure the company based on geographic area before anything else. Once we've determined the value drivers of the organization, we will take a look at who are the contributors in the value creation process. In the previous example, it's obvious that the business line product manager, relevant people of R&D, and all the others necessary in converting the resources to the new product are the contributors in the value creation process. It's important not to include people who support the value creation process, such as the hierarchies related to providing approbations or validations. Now let's see how to realize the structure of value-based teams. The cornerstones of the structure are squads. Squads are essentially the value-oriented teams. In practice, what are the features of squads? First of all, they are composed of 6 to 12, or no more than 15 people each, in order to have an efficient, spontaneous collaboration among members. Secondly, they are end-to-end meaning that a squad includes all the roles necessary in the process, from generating a business idea to deliver value creating products or services to the client. Note that it's essential to include the role of client representative in the squad to make sure that people who talk to and understand well the clients are in the team. Then the squad must be autonomous to attain agility in the sense that the team members are capable and empowered to make operational and tactical decisions without hierarchical approvals, since the technical know-hows are well available within the squad. Lastly, squads must be dedicated and permanent. These are the two main features that distinguish a value-based squad from a traditional project team. By avoiding distributing people across multiple teams and several projects, more concentrated commitment or dedication can be ensured and by keeping the same core members in the same squad over subsequent products, evolutions, and projects. The waste of repeating the typical team forming stages of forming, storming, norming, performing can be avoided. Then what we need to do is to decentralize the structure into small teams or autonomous multidisciplinary squads, and in the meanwhile, disaggregate the products into small chunks, each with intrinsic value in terms of the product feature or the production phase, etc. By using small teams to work on small chunks of products, we have a strategy to manage complexity and volatility at the same time. Another practice to help structure the organization based on value is to ensure a clear line of sight to the clients and end users. People situated in the center of the organization are usually far away from the end users. Very often, the client who pays the organization may not be the client who delivers the product or service experiences to the end users. So the production teams of the organization are often only technically oriented. By creating a line of sight, everyone in the organization can be offered an understanding of his work and how it's valuable to the clients and the end users. This can be done by receiving client feedback on the delivered products and services and sharing it through effective communications with the whole organization on a regular basis. Take a bank, for example. By visiting the agencies of the bank, the value-based teams can see clearly how their projects or products impact both the frontline employees and the end users. The understanding of clients and end users and how one's work contributes and matters to value delivery can create powerful motivation for people in a value-based organization to be more productive and efficient. Equally, physical workspace also has significant impact on the capability of collaboration and the agility of the organization. The image on the left side shows a typical cubic workspace arrangement in the traditional organization. It makes people remain in their own silo functions and doesn't encourage collaboration. 
whereas the right side shows a collaborative work environment where people can have both personal spaces and open or closed space to share. There can be a whiteboard in the shared space to help people rapidly communicate and validate ideas. There can be also an information radiator or a big visible chart that allows graphical visual representation of critical project information, such as the progress, the deliverables, or the risks, etc. This kind of visual management makes work-related information available and transparent to everyone. It can increase people's confidence in their work and enhance trust among co-workers, therefore greatly strengthen the capability of collaboration and enhance the organization's agility. It is important to understand that not all functions are prominently included in the squad. Only those directly involved in value production processes are squad members. Functions that support the squad at divisional levels or corporate level are not part of the squad. Instead, they are centralized and shared. There are three major reasons for shared functions. The existence of expertise only periodically or occasionally used the necessity for corporate visions like a corporate strategy or portfolio management strategies, and the necessity for independent controls, such as compliance to the laws and the regulations. In a value-based organizational structure, about 70% of the functions are in the squads that are really close to and in direct contact with the client. Only 30% are shared supporting functions, either at divisional business line levels or at corporate level. There are no bad or good functions. All functions are important and have their own reasons of existence. There are multiple ways to initiate the shift towards value-based team structure. One of them is through structuring a team based on value flow for a major project that is managed end-to-end -end in a agile way. The project can demonstrate that the value-based team structure works effectively and better than a solo function structure. We can also start the shift through launching a new product or targeting a new client segment with a value-based team, or through co-localization of an end-to-end -end team to display the effects of close, spontaneous collaboration in such a value-oriented structure. Or, in the event of crisis, we can organize a multidisciplinary and autonomous team to manage the crisis. If we can address issues effectively in a crisis with a value-based team, we can also manage the whole organization in the same way on a daily basis.